So what I want you to be able to do is feel just hopefully a little bit more empowered to be like, okay, this is why I still have cravings even with elevated levels of glucose or blood sugar, however you want to refer to it. And then our goal is to be able to decrease those levels naturally make the cells more receptive to uptaking glucose so that you can end this vicious cycle. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Glad to have you here today. We'll be tackling the topic of the high blood sugar levels. So why high blood sugar levels may lead to food cravings, which almost seems impossible because your body is already so full of fuel, you've got so much extra sugar inside of your blood. So how is it possible that you would possibly still then be hungry? So we'll go over that today. Head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2644 right now. You'll be able to read through the five reasons as to why this happens so that you know and you'll be able to actually do something about it, which is the most important thing. So my goal with the Cabral concept is to always to teach the latest and greatest proven natural health protocols to be able to then take action on, like that you can actually do and use in your life. These aren't things that are way outside of the scope that you'd possibly be able to handle. I, I work with real people in the real world, and so does my team, and uh, we wouldn't ask you to do things or teach things that just seem impossible or that, that there's no hope, and that's that's not the goal at all. So here's the thing, and I, and I shared, with it, shared with you a little bit about this, but there's no way that your body should have any cravings if you, let's just say, have, let's say like 30, 40 pounds over your ideal body weight. And again, like I said, this has nothing to do with vanity metrics and what you feel the ideal body weight or isn't the ideal body weight. For me, it doesn't even, it's not even a thought in my head. All I'm thinking about is how to improve someone's overall health, how to improve their overall longevity. And it's gonna be really difficult for me to help them reverse age and extend their life, you know, their lifespan, if I can't extend their health span. And if I can't get them healthy, well, well then, again, um, what's the point of working on anti-aging? So I don't even want people to start thinking about taking uh, longevity-based supplements or doing longevity-based protocols until they get their body healthy. That's the truth, right? And a big step to getting your body healthy, believe it or not, is losing the unhealthy weight if you need to, right? And Part of that is balancing blood sugar levels. And that's why we talk about it so much. It's also one of the top four leading causes of mortality. So like, there's nothing good that comes from elevated blood sugar levels. But I'm not talking about elevated blood sugar levels after a meal. Like some people are turning this into some strange, perverted contest where they won't allow themselves to eat any food where their blood sugar would possibly get above 100. And not only do we not know that that's massively beneficial, like do we know that that's very helpful? Uh, we we have just have no idea. We need to know what chronic. We know what chronically elevated blood sugars are. That sugars are. That's not good. But a blip in blood sugar up and down during the day, not a lot, but after let's say two to three different times during the day, maybe with some of your meals. And I'm not talking about a spike of 160 or more. I'm talking about a hundred to maybe 140 max, and then it comes back down. If it comes back down within two to three hours, you're showing good metabolic flexibility. Plus, you may be restoring uh, adrenal health. You might be restoring your leptin and ghrelin levels to a greater degree, as well as your thyroid. We're still looking at that in science, but like, has no point have humans ever said, oh, we can't eat carbohydrates and these types of things? It's actually on the contrary, and I'll be doing another show on this. The longest lived people in the world, actually the preponderance of their diet is carbohydrates. And again, I'm not telling you to go out and eat processed carbohydrates. I don't believe in that either. But carbohydrates certainly are not the enemy, especially in their whole food form. So anyway, I digress. What I'm talking about right now though is how high blood sugar levels lead to cravings so that you know that just because you're hungry doesn't mean that you have this massively elevated metabolism. It could be a blood sugar issue. All right, I'm gonna write these down for you as well so you don't have to memorize them. The first one is this, insulin resistance. We've talked about that before, but that's basically when glucose levels are high, your pancreas, and I'll show you my model here if you're watching this on video. So if our pancreas here is going to produce more 
uh, insulin, and you can't really see it because it's behind, but you, you could see it behind here if you could. And it's producing more insulin in order to then get the sugar out of your blood to a normal level, right? And into your liver, into your muscles, or fat cells. All right, so that's the goal. But sometimes, after a while, based on cell membrane health as well, the cells themselves are not unlocking or allowing insulin to unlock the door to get that glucose in. And when that happens, as the cell struggles, it signals to the brain sometimes that it actually needs more fuel to help actually get the energy to open those doors. And then this leads to more hunger. Now again, this is a... I, keep, I don't want to keep using this word, but this is a perversion of a health, how a healthy body is supposed to work, right? Your body, when it needs and has open uh, storage capacity for glucose, you're supposed to be able to open those liver cells and muscle cells and get that glucose in to restore what has been used by normal human function, all right? So that's number one. Number two is this, inefficient glucose utilization. What this means is that high blood sugar levels can, pair, can impair the body's ability to efficiently use glucose for energy. So when the cells, as we just spoke about a minute ago, especially the mu muscle cells, when they can't access or utilize glucose, they send signals to the brain that they need more fuel, which increases hunger. So now keep in mind, the glucose is in the bloodstream. It's outside of the cells, and it just can't get in. But the cells don't know that, and so they send signals to the brain up here saying, hey, we need more glucose. Eat more carbs. Eat more food, right? All right, so that's number two. Number three is hormonal fluctuations. So high blood sugar levels can cause imbalances in other hormones that regulate appetite, such as ghrelin, which we call the hunger hormone, and leptin, the satiety hormone. So the more leptin you produce, it tells your body, hey, I'm satiated. The more ghrelin you produce, the more it tells your brain that you're hungry. So these, and I have a, a specific podcast on this, so I'm going to link that up for you today at stephencabral.com slash 2644. So these imbalances can lead to an increase in hunger and, uh, again, a uh, upside down, we'll say, of what leptin and ghrelin are actually supposed to do. When you eat carbohydrates, it's supposed to tell your body that you are now satiated, that you're happy, that you're producing more dopamine, serotonin, and it then tells your body, hey, we're good. We don't need to eat more carbohydrates, right? So that's why some people, they just eat protein. Well, the truth is if you eat enough protein, it can be converted into uh, actual glucose. But let's just say you're just eating fats. You're like, I could really go for some carbs right now. And so your body's saying like, it's really challenging to convert uh, fatty acids over to glucose. In a roundabout kind of way, we can make ketones and other things, but your body still needs glucose, especially uh, in the sympathetic nervous system, so fight or flight, or the anaerobic-based energy system, which is basically short bursts of energy. All right, so that's number three. Number four is dehydration, just good old dehydration. I've got my smoothie here, right? It always sits here on my desk. You can actually see the remnants of it if you're watching this on video. But here's the thing. When you are dehydrated, uh, this can be a specific issue. Now, why would it be a specific issue? Well, we'll get to that in just a second. So think about it this way. If you have a lot of, because we're talking about high blood sugar and cravings, right? Okay, so you've got a lot of sugar in your blood. If your body's not able to get it into your cells, it has a backup system that can help with this. When I was 17 years old, before I was even diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, I had to urinate every 20 to 30 minutes, and I had no idea why, right? No idea why. Nobody had any idea why. Eventually, my mom uh, was smart enough to say, you may have diabetes. Um, and there were people in my family, diabetes, went to the doctor, got tested, failed the glucose tolerance test, lo and behold, type 2 diabetes. Anyway, I don't have type 2 diabetes anymore, which is great. Like I said, all of these things are reversible. But what happens is this. Your body has a backup system for getting rid of glucose, and when needed, it can increase urine production in order to lower blood sugar levels. So, Hyperglycemia, high blood sugar, can lead to increased urination, which may cause dehydration. When you're dehydrated, your body can mistakenly tell you it's hungry when it's really just thirsty, 
right? Because it needs more of the water and minerals. And so it can get that through food as well, since some foods, especially fruits and vegetables, are 90 plus percent water. All right, so that's number four. So make sure you drink your water, but again, we're trying to lower those blood sugar levels. Number five is this, the last one, energy loss through urine. What does that mean? Okay, let's go back to the first one. You, or the, the last one we just went over, you have elevated levels of blood sugar. Your body then increases urine production. After your increased urine production, you begin to remove the glucose from your body. Here's what comes next. When blood sugar levels are very high, the kidneys may not be able to reabsorb the glucose from the urine, right? So basically, your kidneys are filtering the urine, filtering the blood, we're creating urine, we're storing it in the bladder, and then it's going to come out, right? But it doesn't always reabsorb the actual glucose. So this can result in a loss of calories and nutrients, which may trigger a compensatory increase in hunger. All that means is that you had nutrients, you had glucose to use for fuel because your body actually does need glucose in order to survive, contrary to a lot of the popular belief out there. Without glucose, you would be dead. Uh, you need a certain level of glucose for the body. And uh, what happens now is you lost that through that increased urine production. So having said that, this is why, again, I want to be able to teach these a little bit more complicated topics, but so that it makes sense because you might think to yourself, I have high levels of blood sugar. I should have plenty of fuel to be able to burn all the time. Why am I still hungry? The five reasons I went over here today, the insulin resistance, the inefficient glucose utilization, the hormonal fluctuations, especially in leptin and ghrelin, as well as dehydration or energy loss through the extra urination, is what can actually lead to these increased hunger hormones or increased uh, inability to satiate those cravings. So what I want you to be able to do is feel just hopefully a little bit more empowered to be like, okay, this is why I still have cravings even with elevated levels of glucose or blood sugar, however you want to refer to it. And then our goal is to be able to decrease those levels naturally, make the cells more receptive to uptaking glucose so that you can end this vicious cycle. I have so many free podcasts on this particular topic. You can find them all at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. We'll link up a few more today at stephencabral.com forward slash 2644. And of course, I talk about this all in depth as well in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. So always let us know how we can help. Again, I appreciate you. I thank you if this show was helpful. Do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics that you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.